Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in Islam, my elders and Mulana Sahib. I'd like to start off by just say, by reciting a poem. The poem is called, Fathers are Wonderful People. Fathers are wonderful people, too little understood. And we do not sing their praises as often as we should. For somehow, father seems to be the man who pays the bills, while mother binds up little hurts and nurses all the ills. And father struggles daily to live up to his image as protector and provider and hero or the scrimmage. And perhaps that is the reason we sometimes get the notion that fathers are not subject to the thing we call emotion. But if you look inside dad's heart, while no one else can see, you will find he's sentimental and as soft as he can be. But he's so busy every day in the grueling race of life, he leaves the sentimental stuff to his partner and his wife. But fathers are just wonderful in a million different ways. And they merit loving compliments and accolade of praise. For the only reason dad aspires to fortune and success is to make the family proud of him and to bring them happiness. He is a guardian and a guide, someone we can count on to always be on our side. Thank you for attending my father, Abdul Ghulam Hussain's Charlismu today. Ghulam Hussain Sabur's Charlismu today, sorry. We all have busy lives in this country, and my family appreciate the time you have devoted today in coming to us to give your support in a time of great sadness. I'll, I'll be doing my father a great disservice if it does not say a few words about his life and the way he led it. Anybody that knew my father would agree that he was a very charismatic character with an air of authority about him. His friends extended to all corners of the planet, and this has been very evident in the past few weeks with a number of messages of condolences we received from far and wide. Dad was born in beloved Uganda in 1927, and he was one of nine children. He loved them all till his dying day, but in particularly, he loved his mother. His wish was always to be buried next to her in rugby, and we have fulfilled that wish. Dad had, brought, Dad had bought that burial plot in 1988, exactly 30 years ago, in preparation for his death. I've already mentioned that Dad loved his father, mother, brothers and sisters. However, it doesn't end there. He loved his wife, Fiza, to, to whom he had been married for over 62 years. He loved and cherished his three daughters, Shaida, Shabira, and Shatman. But the apple of his eyes were his three daughters, three granddaughters, Sabina, Yasmin, and Saira. Dad's love extended to his distant family too, and he would not hesitate to support and help his nephews and nieces in any way he could. I know of many examples of him opening the doors to his house to anyone that was in need. He would look after them, not just for the days, but for many, many years. Dad's love extended to strangers and to anyone who worked for him. He recently returned to his hometown of Mabale in Uganda to look for somebody called James, 
who was his African housekeeper for many years. To this day, there's still a photograph of James in the house. Sadly, Dad never found James, even though he advertised in every newspaper and radio news bulletins. In 1972, Dad left Uganda during the Ed I mean Exodus, and he and his family left everything that they owned behind, and they were taken to an army camp where he progressively became depressed at what had happened to him. His pride and honor refused him to queue up in a line for food, so his children would bring him something to eat. The most important thing for dad was for his children to get the best education. So whenever he was offered a property in different parts of the UK, he rejected them all until he was told Rugby had a brilliant school where his daughters would be well educated. He never chose the best house, but just the best school. There were no Asians or Asian community or a mosque in rugby at that time. Sadly, Dad's beloved mother passed away while she was living with him in 1976 and it broke his heart. Since then, his devotion was such that he moved to Leicester. Even when he moved to Leicester, he made a point of traveling 30 miles every Friday lunchtime to visit a grave. It did not matter if the weather was good or bad. He would insist on going. He did this from 1989 to 2015, when he sadly started becoming ill and could no longer drive. Throughout his life, Dad was well organized and had impeccable records for everything going back years. He knew everyone's date of birth and if they were deceased, when they passed away. He would often call the children of his close friends and remind them of forthcoming dates when their father or mother had died. He would even tell them what their favorite foods were and what they should cook on the day. Dad was very sentimental and he would bring out his albums and pictures at any opportunity and reminisce about the good times and friends and family all over the world. His heart was always longing to return to Uganda and especially Mabale where he grew up. Dad became unwell three to four years ago with a condition that affected his mobility, which sadly left him bedbound. It was due to the wonderful care of his three beloved daughters and wife that he survived as long as he did. They would tend to his every need, day and night. My father was not the type of man who would upset argue or fight with anyone. However, if he has inadvertently offended anyone, I apologize on his behalf and ask you to forgive him. He was always particular about his affairs and never had any debts. However, if anyone feels that this is not the case, please let me know so I can deal with this. Finally, on behalf of my family and the extended Sabu family, I thank the Lester Jamaat in helping the four or five days, particularly around the time of the funeral. The committee and the members of this Jamaat have been exceptional and will never be able to repay the kindness and love that has been shown to my family. I thank the kitchen committee for the effort in providing us with a meal today. I cannot name everyone personally, as I fear I may miss someone. We have had many messages of condolences that have gone a long way in helping us with our sad loss. However, 
please forgive us if you have not responded to each and every one of you individually. The last month has been difficult. I started off with a poem, and I'd like to conclude with a poem. And this poem is called Looking Back. I hope wherever Dad is, he's listening to this poem, because this is especially for him. As we look back. As we look back over time, we find ourselves wondering, did we remember to thank you enough for all you've done for us, for the times you're by our side, to help and support us, to celebrate our success, to understand our problems, and to accept our defeats? Or for teaching us by your example the value of hard work, good judgment, courage, and integrity. Dad, we wonder if we ever thanked you for the sacrifices you made to let us have the very best, and for the simple things like laughter, smiles, and the times we shared. If we have forgotten to show our gratitude enough for all the things you did, we are thanking you now. And we are hoping you knew all along how much you meant to us. Please recite Surah Fatih for my father, Abdul Ghulam Hussain Sabur. Assalamu alaikum.